Hey guys, welcome to another video. We're going to talk about bushcraft tools, tier four. But I just wanted to show you that my t shirt finally came in. I ordered this thing like three months ago. And I think Teespring got a little uh, offended. I think I triggered them. But there it is. Isn't that cool? And on the back. Nice, huh? This is a really nice t-shirt. I haven't washed it yet. I'll probably turn it inside out the first time. Anyways, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about on the table, so don't go away. Survival us, do you really, really, really stay prepared? I mean, are you ready to go at a moment's notice? You talk about bushcraft, you talk about bugging out, you talk about building inch bags. I mean, is you are you really ready to go? Well, let's see. Uh-oh, what is that over there? That looks like the Kelty Eagle, the 128 liter in case I never come home bag. What's that sitting on top? Oh, that looks like my SHTF uh, sidearm. You know, Ruger single six. Yeah. We're gonna do a bag breakdown on my inch bag. That is something that I've never showed you. I've done bug out bag videos before. I've done camping bag videos before, but I have never shown you what an inch bag is. And for the record, I just want to clarify something to you. An inch bag contains, are you ready? Zero food. There's no food in that bag. You are going out in the woods and you're grabbing that. That's a 60 pound kit, by the way, with tools. 60 pound kit. That kit right there is designed to go out level four, tier four, okay? We're going to go out in the woods, and we're going to live forever. So why bring food? You're cheating if you're bringing food. 60-pound sustainment system right there. You think I'm going to be able to tote all them five-gallon buckets of rice and beans? Uh-uh. Yep. So we're going to talk in great detail tonight. Let me get the camera adjusted here. I'm playing around with this new uh, studio setup. And before we get started, I just want to go over the uh, featured cast member tonight. We always have a guest on the show. They always happen to just swing by. They never leave. They always want to just stay and hang out with me. And I'm like, it's okay. It's fine. So, this is my buddy. This was actually uh, Papa Nine's. Remington 700 mag No, I'm sorry. It wasn't a 700 mag. It was a 700 Remington 30-06. We had a uh, What was it a 7 mag? That's what we had. I Ended up giving that gun away gave it to my brother-in-law. I told him I said if you can fire it four times in a row You can have it and I thought he was going to cry by the fourth shot 7 mag, you don't need it. This is what you want right here, 30 out 6. It used to be an ADL, and I changed the stock out, did my old Russian Marpat on it. So there it is, 30 out 6, with the Magpul furniture. Got the old Vortex Razor Gen 2. That's a 3 by 18. Wonderful, wonderful. I finally got that thing dialed in. Upgraded the trigger on it. It's got a Timony trigger. Takes box magazines now. That gun is absolutely amazing. So much fun. Really like shooting that rifle. So yeah, that's tonight's guest. We're going to have a conversation about bushcraft tools. You can see on the table in front of you, I've got a few things I want to talk about. In... I don't care how long you hang out on YouTube on the prepping channels and the bushcraft shows and 
the survival shows, the SHTF, you're going to come across this subject. It's what I call a Ford Chevy conversation, right? For you boomers out there, y'all know what a Ford Chevy conversation is, right? And you, you, you have a hard time sometimes uh, debating that because I think it comes down to, uh, you know, what is your fanboy club? Are you a Ford guy? Personally, I'm not, just so you know. I'm not. I'm actually a Mopar guy if you want to be truthful about it. But right now I am uh, driving both, Mopar and um, Chevy. So, yeah. We're going to talk about Tier 4 inch bag bugging out we're not going to be gone for three days survival lust what other tools that i need to take with me if i'm going to bug out do i need to wrap my mind around carrying at least uh six to seven pounds of tools with me that sure is a lot of weight I mean that's a lot of weight to be carrying. Are you sure? Are you are you really sure about that? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm going to tell you right now that the tools that you're seeing on the table are the tools that you need to wrap your mind around if we're talking about sustainment. If we're just talking about bugging out for the weekend and going camping, playing around with a little bitty fire, you know, then no, the machete will work. This will work. This is all you need to bring with you. You can leave all this stuff at home. Get you a pair of gloves and get you a machete. That's all you need. But it's got to be at least a uh, half inch or quarter inch spine thickness because you're going to want a baton. And that's what that is. That's a .025 in thickness. And this is a A2 steel. They were not making this. This is the Bark River Gallic 2 with the upswept point. This was a custom made knife by Bark Rivers. This was the very first one they made and I put a reserve on it and they made it specially for me with the micarta camo handle. This is a this is an awesome knife. And I guess I would say before we get into this conversation, where are you going? Are you going to be out in the bush somewhere? Are you going to be out there in the California desert? Are you going to be hacking at uh, mesquite trees, juniper trees? Then maybe this isn't necessary. Maybe this will work, okay? Maybe, uh, maybe you want to bring this, this chopper. The old Lon Humphreys Retribution. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful with the green liners? That's uh, Curly Burl Maple, and uh, this is a custom made knife, and let me tell you something, the balance and the weight, I wish you could feel that. I wish I could put that knife in your hand right now. This is uh, an absolutely beautiful, beautiful tool. So yeah, if you're out in Arizona, Nevada, and uh, all you have is junipers and mesquite trees, Maybe an occasional cottonwood. You might come across the cottonwood once in a while. Then, yeah, we'll have that conversation around, you know, minimizing your weight. But for the rest, for the rest of us that live in uh, the wilderness, forests, the jungles, where we have oak, pine, ash, walnut, hickory, and you're going out there to live? You're going out there for 90 days? How long are you going for? Let's talk about how long you're going for, and I'll tell you what you need to bring. There are so many guys who wrap their mind around size and weight constraint. And it seems that they predicate everything that they do in their survival application with those two factors, size and weight, size and weight. You hear it in every video. Oh, size and weight matters, does it? Does it really? I disagree. When it comes to craftsmanship, construction, maintaining survival, shelter, building fire, sustainment, I, I don't think size and weight matters. You know what I think matters? When you're living on 400 calories a day, if you're lucky, you know what I think matters? 
is how many calories are you burning? Do you realize that in a survival situation, an extended situation, when you bring your 50 to 60 pound inch bag with you, do you realize that you're going to be losing a pound a day? Wrap your mind around that for just a minute. A pound a day, that's what you're going to lose. If you cannot feed yourself. So you're going to go out in the woods and you're going to just sit there and whack, whack, whack all day long with a, with a little uh, garlic or the retribution because you're, uh, oh, this is only a pound and a half. I'm, I don't want to take no two and a half pound axe. That's crazy. Why would I carry a two and a half pound axe, survival lost? Well, you want me to tell you why? Because the number one factor that you're going to be faced with in a true SHTF situation is starvation. So take your little size and weight constraint argument and just throw that out the window. I, I, am, I am debunking that myth tonight. That myth has been busted. In a true SHTF situation, there's no valid reason to talk about size and weight. What you really need to be talking about is starving to death and your calorie burn that's what you need to be focused on okay so let me tell you what I'm gonna take I have used this uh, Gransford Brook this is featured by the way in an upcoming video I'm like five videos ahead in production I'm so proud of myself I'm not sure when this video is going to be uh, released, but um, it may come before or after the one I've already filmed. I haven't decided yet. This is uh, the small forest axe. I can tell you right now, in a bug out retreat, just a little week, maybe two week retreat, I would be tempted to bring this. I would. I would be very tempted to, to bring this. This is definitely not going, okay? This is not going. So let's just put that out of the way. So just stop looking at it. I know it's pretty. I know you're on uh, Knives Ship for Free's website right now, and you're looking at, you know, how much is that garlic? And you're probably looking at this, small forest axe. Okay, let's compromise. Let's compromise. Let's buy a Gransford Brook small forest axe. I mean, is there really much leverage difference between this and this 28 inch splitting axe? Is there really much difference? You see that? This weighs about a pound, pound and a half. This weighs two and a quarter. This is 28 inches long. Leverage. Right here is leverage. We uh, we heat with wood, by the way. And sometimes, depending on how hard the winter is, this winter was not hard at all, so we didn't go through our supply. So I didn't have to split. I didn't have to split wood this year. This is the first winter that I did not have to split wood. But I'm going to tell you right now, I would never in a million years depend on this for splitting wood. This is a glorified hatchet. That's what this is. I want you to try to chop down an 8 to 10 inch diameter tree with something like this. And then get back to me and tell me how long it took you. Tell me how many calories you burned doing it. Guys, I'm going to tell you something right now. I want to drive home the point tonight. Axe or machete. Axe or machete. In the context of bugging out with an inch bag. I'm going to throw this two and a half pound system in my kit all day long. I can build a house with this right here. If you can chop down seasoned wood or even deadfall, if you find deadfall laying around and you can split it up, drag you a log into base camp, use it as a chopping block, do you have any idea how many uh, calories you're going to save? with uh, using an axe like this and then if you want to delam, delam. get you one of these this weighs nothing this is aluminum 
This is my old seven saw. Okay? This is made in uh, the USA up there in Duluth, Minnesota. Super cool. It's a buck saw, basically. And these are real popular too, aren't they? I've got to be careful because we've been using this outside, so uh, I've got to go wash my hands after we're done playing with this. But this is the Silky Big Boy because we've been dealing with a bunch of poison oak out in the back, and we're it's that time of year to deal, to deal with the poison oak. I guarantee you this thing's got poison oak all over it. So I need to go wash up afterwards. All i got to do is walk by that stuff and I get it. So this would work, right? Would you throw this in your bag? I would. I would take this saw and this axe. I'm leaving the retribution. I'm leaving the garlic. Um, if I can find a green blade, because you can do a, a dead wood blade, and then you can also do a green blade for this. And then I store this saw in a bicycle inner tube. It's a, basically a sheath, and I have that attached to my uh, inch bag. And then this has a belt clip to it. I just have it in another location right now. Actually, Mountain Dew's been using this, and she loves it. I've got all the power tools you can think of. We've got all the weed whackers and bush tools and DeWalt powered tree delimmers. You know what she comes in and asks for every time? This right here. Where's your silky saw? I want to use that. That is so nice. You can tell she's not cleaned the blade. I'm going to have to get on to her. Looks like she's been in the dirt with it down here on the end. Anyway, I'm going to tell you how that chewing out works. All right? I'm going to tell you how that landed by the time I'm done. You know it, right? <laughs> you know how that's going to go over like a lead balloon. Fellas, we can have a debate, we can have a conversation about what sustainment tools that you need to bring with you, but I want you to just consider, please just consider, going with just a regular splitting axe. And this is in the middle. This will allow you to delam, it'll allow you to uh, chop, it'll allow you to split. It doesn't do anything real well, but it does everything okay. Plus it acts as a hammer. So if I needed to build a shelter wall, maybe I want to enclose my, my camp in. Maybe I want to put a fence up. This is going to allow me to drive those uh, poles in the ground. Right? This, this tool is amazing. You can do so much with an axe. So much. So I'm going to, and then if the handle breaks, you just go out there and make you another one. You've got your knife on you. Go out there and make you another one. So my attitude would be, you just put this in the fire. And maybe it breaks right there and you can't get it out. You just put it in the fire and you just burn it off. And then you take and drive it out and put a new, put a new handle in it. So bushcraft, Absolutely. If we're only going to have to process a little bit of wood for a night or two, then go for it. This is one of my favorite tools to bring. It is. But I want you to focus your attention, like I said, on Tier 4. Tier 4 is, is we're going to Mars, guys. We're never coming back. I'm going to complain, and I'm going to suffer, and I'm going to model through carrying my 60-pound pack. But once I get to where I'm going, I'm going to be thankful that I have this tool right here. I have, I have used this. I spent six months living in the wilderness of Colorado. Six months, okay? We use these little small baby little tools. They get old. Thank God there was two other guys with me. But we did. It was my dad and my uncle. We lived six months in the wilderness of Colorado. We squatted. It was great. It was a wonderful time. We had to build latrines. We had to take outdoor showers. We had to hunt, forage, collect, live off the land. And we had to make fire every single day. Six months we did it. We didn't build no cabins. We had tents. And it was sort of a... I don't know what you call it. It was like 
I don't want to call it a midlife crisis, but it was a it was a bonding moment moment for our family. It was a, it was all all us boys. We all went out there and we just decided to become Jeremiah Johnson for one year. It was my thirty third birthday. Got out there on my birthday, just outside of uh, Glenwood Springs, Colorado. We were camping at fourteen thousand feet, and uh, we had little tools like this. I hated them. I absolutely hate them. I wanted a big old splitting axe like this right here. Alright? Okay, guys. That's it. This is what I want you to think about. Please let me know what you think. Seven Saw, Big Boy Silky, get you a big old splitting axe. Or are you going to hang out with a machete? Till next time, be safe.